All right, am I looking at you? All right, very good. Hey, tell us a little bit about um, the relationship with John Deere again. I know you said some up at the podium, but. Yeah, John Deere has been involved with Riverbend Food Bank from the very inception, helping provide the seed money to help uh, start Riverbend Food Bank back in 1982. And with a, a wonderful support along the way, they asked great questions that strengthened us strategically. Um, and then, you know, as I shared today, their financial commitment always comes with, with an army of volunteers that we're gonna see today uh, helping us distribute food. Tell us a little bit about stepping outside of maybe today's event, just a little bit. Tell us a little bit about the impact of COVID and the last, you know, 16, 18 months uh, on, on your effort, on Riverbend's efforts. Sure. So just to give a little context, the highest level of food insecurity before COVID that we ever had was back in 2009 um, with the Great Recession. We've been working for 10 years to get that back down. And had COVID not happened, we would have announced at the beginning of last year that we finally reduced food insecurity down to below what it was in 2008. Then COVID happened and the need jumped by 50 percent. Did it? It did. And so then we had we had that much more need. The supply chain was messed up. Remember when you couldn't find anything on the when when the grocery shelves were empty, they didn't have anything left to donate to us. Plus, we normally have 4000 volunteers a year and that went to nothing because we were trying to keep everybody safe. So it's been a busy year uh, trying to meet that need. And yet, you know, we distribute more meals than ever we ever before because of the support of the community. And how many have you did you um distributed in 2020. Yeah, 23.1 million meals in 2020. To give uh, a frame of reference, back in 2014, we distributed 7.3 million. Right. And set a goal of tripling that by 2025. Uh, and so it, you and, made and it. We did it five years early, uh, but still need to keep growing in order to meet the entire need. Okay. How do you rebound from something like that when you have, the need is so great. Yeah, so it's two things. One is is really the food supply, because we distribute all the food we get. So we really have to focus on any place that's throwing food away. Um, that's perfectly good food, there's nothing wrong with it, but you can't sell it, but it's still edible. And so we're always looking for more and more sources of, uh, of, of food that we can rescue. Um, but then it's just, it's take care of the team. You know, the hardest part of the past year is that because of COVID and, and, and not having those 4,000 volunteers that we normally have, um, a really heavy burden fell on the, on, the, on the team. And so I've really, you know, we're just trying to take good care of them. People, so that my team is, is thankful of jobs, right? Nobody got furloughed. Um, is, and really proud to be making a difference in the community, but they're tired. And so we're, we're looking forward to bringing volunteers back and kind of easing that burden while we take care of the team. Then just, you know, let's commit as a community to never throwing away food that could still be eaten by someone in need 